All right, lesson 1.2, multiplying polynomials. Uh, students will be able to multiply polynomials with, with monomials and binomials. So let's start off by just multiplying these simple monomials. Okay, so when I'm multiplying two uh, monomials like that, the first thing I'm going to do is just multiply the numbers. So what's negative 3 times negative 9? Well, negative 10 is negative is positive, and 3 times 9 is 27. 27. Then I'm going to look at the variables. The variables have exponents on them. Whenever I am multiplying ex mix, multiplying variables with exponents, all I have to do is add the exponents. Let's explain wh why real quick. t squared is really like saying t times t. And t cubed is really like saying t times t times t. So really I'm saying, hey, t times t times t times t times t. Well, how many t's are there total being multiplied together? Well, there's five, so that's t to the fifth. So that's why I can just add the exponents. This is t to the fifth. Done. Boom. Go ahead and try practice number one on your own. Pause the video now. Okay, so hopefully you got negative 15b to the ninth. All right, let's go on to the next one. Find the values a and b that satisfy the following equation. Okay, these ones are a little bit tricky, kind of like what we just did before, except for now, look, we're trying to figure out what a is, and we're trying to figure out what b is. It's a little tricky. So what I would recommend is let's just look at the coefficients first. Like I did before, I just did the numbers, so now let's just do the numbers. Only one of them we don't know, it's a. So I'd write this as a times negative 4 equals 20. Solve this real quick just by dividing both sides by negative 4, and I get that a is negative 5. Perfect. Let's look at the, vari or the variables, um, I have the exponents of the variables. I have 2, I have b, and I have 6. Well, I said when the bases are the same, we just add the variables, so 2 plus b equals 6, so b must be 4. Perfect. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and try practice number two? I'd pause the video and give it a shot. Okay. So hopefully you got A is six and B is five. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Evaluate the product of the monomial and the polynomial as a trinomial. Okay. So all we're going to do here is we're going to distribute this term to all of these terms. So let's just do this one first. Again, just the numbers first. Six times seven is 42. And then z squared times z squared gives me z to the fourth. And I just keep going. Now 6 times 2 is 12. And z squared times z is going to give me z to the third. Because remember, there's really kind of an imaginary 1 up there. So 2 plus 1 is 3. Now 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. There's no z, so we just leave it as z squared. And we are done. Okay, for the next one, real quick, what I want you to do before you try it is realize that there's a slight typo. This isn't supposed to be a z. It's supposed to be a Y. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Again, pause the video, and then come back when you're ready. Okay, I got negative 5Y cubed minus 35Y squared plus 30Y. All right, let's go on to the next page. Okay, so this one says find the values of A, B, and C that satisfies the following equation. Very similar to what we were doing before, but now we're solving for these variables. I'm just going to go left to right and see what I have here. I know that in my negative 4 times 2 x squared should equal cx squared. So I'm just going to use the numbers and go ahead and write the negative 4 times 2 should equal c because c is the coefficient. So that means that c is negative 8. Okay. Let's look at the next one. The next one says a, so I know the negative 4 times a should equal 12. So I'm going to write that. Negative 4 times a equals 12. Solve for a. a must be negative 3. Okay, lastly, I have negative 4 times b equals negative 16, so I'm going to set that up. Negative 4 times b equals negative 16, divide by negative 4, and I get that b must be 4. And there we go. Just simply broke it up into three different equations and solved. Remember, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the parts that match up. See how that's an x squared, that's an x squared, that's just an x, that's just an x. That has no x, that has no x. That's how I know how what parts match up. So go ahead and give practice number four a try. Um, again, pause the video and come back when you're ready. Okay, hopefully you got that a equals 8, f equals negative 21, and b equals negative 4. Let's go on to the next one. All right, this is what it's all about. Um, hopefully, or probably before, you've, you've learned the, about FOIL, and that's multiplying binomials times binomials. Well, today... I want you guys to learn a different method. It's similar to FOIL, but it's going to work for a lot more problems. That method is called the box method. Let me show you what I mean by that. To multiply these two things together, 
I could go through and distribute the x every term, distribute the two to every term, and that was, and then I could add it all up, and that would be, that would that would be sufficient. What I'd rather you guys do is construct a box, put one of the binomials on top, and put one of the binomials on the side, and now all you have to do is multiply for each um, each square inside the box. So for example, x times x is x squared. X times two is two x. Negative 1 times x is just negative x, and negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Often when you do it, you'll notice that these two terms at a diagonal are like terms. So when you go to write your answer, you can combine those. We got x squared. 2x minus an x is just x, so I'm going to say plus 1x, and then minus 2. And there we go. We have our answer. The box method is just a really nice way to multiply binomials, and you'll see when we get down here to trinomials, it's going to work fine for those as well. So I want you guys to go ahead, try practice number five on your own, draw a little box, and something you can also do, which I do all the time, is since I already have the x minus three here, I could just draw the box right underneath there and do x plus four there. So go ahead and try that. I recommend pausing the video and coming back when you're ready. Okay, hopefully your box looked like mine and your final answer is x squared plus x minus 12. Okay. Sorry about that, little technical difficulties. Okay, what happens if you get problems like this where there's actually um, coefficients? No problem. Still just going to construct a box. 3k, negative 5 down here. 3 times 7 is 21, and k times k is k squared. Negative 2 times 3k is negative 6k. Negative 5 times 7k is negative 35k, and negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. Again, you have your like terms, and they're both negative. So really easy, we've got 21k squared. Minus negative 6 and negative 35 makes negative 41k plus 10. Boom, we're done. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try this one on your own. Go ahead, I'll help you make the box. Now it should be easy. Fill out the box and find the answer. Um, real quick, though, this could have been the top of the box. This could have been the side. It doesn't really matter, okay? Just as long as you have one binomial on the top and one on the side. All right, go ahead and fill that out, pause the video, and come back when you're ready. All right, hopefully you saw this one was a little bit of a unique one, and that's because we didn't have like terms in both of these, so we got different degrees on all of our terms. That's okay, just means that we don't have any like terms that we can add together. Um, so you're gonna write it with the highest degree first and go down from there. So if there was a four, if there was a y to the fourth, we would put that right in here. There's not, so we just do the negative 16y fifth minus 6y to the third plus 8y squared plus 3. And that's our answer. Done. See how easy the box method makes it for us? In fact, it's so easy that even when we get onto trinomials like this one, it's just as simple. Just all we have to do is make a bigger box. So I'm going to do the 3x here, the 4 here, make a big line, put a line in between all my terms, and let's just go to work. 3x times 2x squared makes 6x cubed. 3 times 7 is 21, and x times x is x squared. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15x. 4 times 2 is 8x squared. 4 times 7 is 28x. And then 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. There are some like terms. They do follow that pattern of that nice little diagonal. So when I go to write it out, I got 6x cubed. 21 and 8 makes 29x squared. 28 minus 15 makes 13x and then minus 20. Boom. Make it look like it's as easy as kindergarten work here. Because it really is. Go ahead and try this one. Make your box. I'll help you construct it first. And then I got a b squared here and a negative 3b here. Put our lines in. And go. Go ahead and fill that thing out. Pause the video and come back when you're ready. Okay, here's all the parts I got in the box. Remember when you have a b squared times a b squared, you add the exponents, b fourth. And that's what I did all through here. I had like terms here and like terms here. So I added them up, we got b to the fourth minus 5b cubed plus 12b squared minus 18b. There's the answer. All right, lastly, I want you guys to try this one on your own. Suppose a rectangle had a width of 2x minus five and a length of 4x squared minus 3x plus two. Since the area of a rectangle can be found by multiplying the length to the width, so they, we can find the area by just multiplying the width and the length. 
Find a polynomial expression that represents the area of the rectangle. Here's my hint. Draw a sketch and use the box method. So you can actually draw a rectangle. You could put 2x minus 5, or sorry, just 2x minus 5 here. You could put 4x squared minus 3x here, or plus 2, on top. And then maybe you could figure out what the area would be. What would be a polynomial expression that represents the area of the rectangle? Go ahead and try that one. I'll look for it on your notes. See you guys next video.